learn how to crochet the waffle stitch and make this soft, snuggly, and beautifully textured blanket. It's a simple two row repeat and you'll be amazed at how quick and easy it is to crochet. You can make it as a lovely throw blanket or it makes a fantastic gender neutral baby blanket. It's a perfect crochet newborn baby blanket because there's no large holes or gaps for a baby's fingers to get caught in. And there's a beautiful complimentary border that adds a stunning finishing touch. Hello from Halifax. I'm Jo with Jo the World Creations. And today we're going to make my waffle stitch blanket crochet pattern. All the details such as the hook size, the amount of yarn required, the yarn weight, as well as the step-by-step -step written instructions with diagrams, they're all available entirely for free on my website and there's a link to that in the description below this video. We're going to start by making a slip knot. Place your slip knot on your hook and pull tight. To make the blanket the size that's listed in the pattern, you're going to chain 104. For this video tutorial, I'm going to be making a small swatch and I'm going to chain 20. With your starting chains now made, we're going to begin row one. For all of row one, we're going to be working into the back ridge loops which are these bumps along the back. We're gonna start by working in the third chain from the hook. Here's the first, second, and here's the third. We're gonna rotate our work to find that third back ridge loop, and we'll insert our hook into this back ridge loop to make our first stitch. So working into this third back ridge loop, we're going to double crochet. Insert your hook in under that back ridge loop and make a double crochet stitch. Now we're going to double crochet in each chain all the way across. So working into the next chain, double crochet. And we're simply going to double crochet in each chain all the way across the row. I'm almost finished making a double crochet stitch in each chain all the way across. I have one last chain to work into. Nothing special happens here, but just to show you the difference between the last chain and the slip knot. This is the last chain I'll be working into. Working into the last chain, still under that back ridge loop, make your last double crochet stitch. You can refer to the written instructions for the stitch count for each row. Now we're going to start row two. To start row two, we are going to chain two. One, two. And we're going to turn our work. In this pattern, a row two is a right side row, which means the front of our blanket or our work will be facing us. This might be a little confusing because we just did a row of double crochet stitches and the back of these stitches are facing us, but that was just to set us up so that we can now work on our right side row. We're going to start by working into the very first stitch. This is a stitch that's attached to the chain two we just made. In this first stitch, we're going to double crochet. We're now going to begin the repeat portion of the row. This is what we're going to be repeating all the way across. The first thing we're going to do is make a front post double crochet stitch around the next stitch. This means we're going to be working around the post of this next stitch, not working into the top like we normally do under the top two loops. We're going to leave the top of this next stitch unworked and only work around the post. We're going to insert our hook from front to the back at the right of this stitch and then bring our hook back out to the left of it. Let's make our first front post double crochet stitch. Yarn over, insert your hook from the front to the back to the right of this next stitch and bring your hook back out 
at the left of it. Now we're going to finish our double crochet stitch like we normally would. Yarn over and pull through a loop. Three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull that yarn through the first two loops. Two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull that yarn through the remaining two loops. And there's our first front post double crochet stitch. And the next or final part of the repeat is to make a double crochet stitch in the next two stitches. So working into the next two stitches, and just to be super clear, want to make sure you're not working into the top of the stitch that we just worked into. We're going to work into the next two stitches and just make a regular double crochet stitch in the top of the next two stitches. There's my first, working into the next stitch, make a double crochet stitch. These are the steps we're going to be repeating all the way across the row until there are two stitches left. Let's do it again together. What we'll be repeating is to make a front post double crochet stitch around the next stitch. Here's the next stitch that we're going to work around, around the post of it, not into the top of this next stitch. Then when we continue the repeat, we'll work into the top of the next two stitches. As you get started, you might find it helpful to stretch your work a little bit so you can clearly see the next stitch. We're going to make a front post double crochet stitch around the next stitch. Working in the top of the next two stitches, double crochet in the top of the next two stitches. There's my first, and here is my second double crochet stitch. We'll do it quickly one more time. Around the next stitch, make a front post double crochet stitch. And then a double crochet stitch in each of the next two stitches. You go ahead and repeat those steps all the way across the row until there are two stitches left. I've just repeated those steps all the way across the row. I have two stitches left. This here is the second last stitch. Here is the last stitch, and beside it is the chain two that started the previous row. We are never going to work into these chains. Around this second last stitch, we're going to front post double crochet. So around this second last stitch, make a front post double crochet stitch. And then working in the top of the very last stitch, working normally under the top two loops, we're simply going to make one double crochet stitch. Working in the top of this last stitch, make a double crochet stitch. You can refer to the written instructions for a stitch count for each row. One thing to note is that chains in this pattern never count as stitches. So the chain two that we make at the beginning of the row does not count as a stitch. Only count the double crochet and the front post double crochet stitches. To start row three, we're going to chain two. One, two. And we're going to turn. Row three is a wrong side row, which means the back of our blanket is now facing us. We're going to start by working into the very first stitch. This is the stitch that's attached to the chain two we just made. And into this first stitch, we're going to double crochet. Working into this first stitch, double crochet. Now we're going to begin the repeat portion of the row. This is what we're going to be repeating all the way across until there are two stitches left. In the next stitch, 
in the top of that next stitch, working under the top two loops, double crochet. Working in the next stitch, double crochet. And the next part of our repeat, the final part, is to make a front post double crochet stitch around the next two stitches. As this blanket body grows, the stitches become more pronounced and easier to see what stitch you should be making. And I can already see a little bit that these stitches are standing out a little bit more than the next one. So you're going to start to see, especially as it grows, it's going to become more obvious which stitches you need to make. But for now, let's keep, keep following the pattern and we're going to make a front post double crochet stitch around the next two stitches. And as a reminder, we always leave the top of the stitches unworked when we make a front post double crochet stitch around the posts. So here's the next stitch. We're going to work around the post and make a front post double crochet stitch. Now working around the post of the next stitch, make a front post double crochet stitch. And these are the steps you're going to be repeating all the way across until there are two stitches left. Let's do it one more time together. In the next stitch, working into the top of this next stitch, we're going to double crochet. Working in the top of this next stitch, double crochet. Working around the posts of the next two stitches, a front post double crochet around the next two stitches. There's one. And there's two. You go ahead and repeat these steps all the way across until there are two stitches left. I've just repeated those steps all the way across. To finish the row, we're going to double crochet in the last two stitches. First, working into the second last stitch, into the top of that stitch, make a double crochet. And then working in the top of that last stitch, double crochet. For the rest of the blanket body, repeat rows two and three consecutively until the height of your blanket is half an inch away from matching the width if you want a square blanket or half an inch away from your desired height. After you reach your desired height, finish the blanket body by repeating row two and then start the border. In case it's helpful, let's do rows two and three one more time together. We are now going to do row four, which is repeating row two. We're going to chain two and turn. The front of our work or the right side of the blanket is now facing us. In this first stitch, double crochet. Now we're going to begin the repeat portion of the row. Around the next stitch, make a front post double crochet stitch. and double crochet in the next two stitches. And we're gonna repeat those steps all the way across. One more time, around the next stitch, make a front post double crochet stitch, and then double crochet in the next two stitches. Repeat those steps all the way across the row until there are two stitches left. To finish the row, working around the second last stitch, front post double crochet. And in the last stitch, make a double crochet stitch. Now let's do row five, which is repeating row three. To start, 
we're going to chain two, one, two, and turn. Every time we repeat a row three, it is a wrong side row, which means the back of our work or the wrong side of our blanket is now facing us. Working into the first stitch, we're going to double crochet And now we're going to begin the repeat portion of the row, which starts with double crochet in the next stitch. And then front post double crochet around the next two stitches. There's my first, around the next stitch, front post double crochet. And we're going to repeat these steps all the way across the row until there are two stitches left. Let's do it one more time together. In the next stitch, double crochet. Around the next stitch, front post double crochet. And front post double crochet around the next stitch. Repeat this all the way across the row until there are two stitches left. After repeating those steps all the way across until there are two stitches left, the final step is to make a double crochet stitch in those last two stitches. Working in the second last stitch, double crochet, and working in the last stitch, double crochet. You go ahead and repeat row two and row three consecutively. When you're half an inch away from your desired height, finish the blanket body by repeating row two. And then we can start the blanket border. Now let's start the blanket border. I've just completed a repeat of row two, and this is very important. Make sure you've just completed a repeat of row two, so the right side or the front of your blanket should be facing you. To start the border round one, we're going to chain one. We are not going to turn. We are going to start by working down the side. I'm going to rotate my work so it's easier to see and work into. We are going to single crochet evenly down the side, which means to make evenly spaced out single crochet stitches all the way down. When making our stitches, we want to work into stitches at the end of each row, not into spaces. We can insert our hook under one loop, or you may find there's spots where it's better to insert your hook under two loops. The exact stitch placement and the exact number of stitches are not important. The goal is to have evenly spaced out single crochet stitches all the way down the side. Where you're gonna be working into is either a double crochet stitch so at the end of this row, here is a double crochet stitch that you're going to work into or into a chain two that started a row. Those are the only places you'll work into. And I found how to get the most evenly spaced out single crochet stitches is to when, when we work into a double crochet stitch, make a single crochet stitch at the start or at the top of this double crochet stitch and then make another single crochet stitch at the bottom. And then when working into a chain two, only make one single crochet stitch into the chain two. And if you can follow that all the way down, it will give you a nice evenly spaced out number of single crochet stitches that will really works with the border. We're going to start by working into a double crochet stitch. So let's follow that rule of making a single crochet stitch at the top of it and then another single crochet stitch into the bottom of it. Right below it, we'll only make one single crochet stitch into that chain two. And we'll do that all the way down. 
Here's our first double crochet stitch to work into. So let's insert our hook under one loop or two, and it can be tight, take your time, and I'm gonna make a single crochet stitch in the top of that double crochet stitch. Now I'm gonna insert my hook into the bottom of that double crochet stitch and make a single crochet stitch. Now I'm at a chain two, so I'm gonna insert my hook into that chain two and single crochet, just make one. Now I'm at a double crochet stitch, so I'm gonna insert my hook somewhere near the top of it, working into the stitches, not into the spaces around it. There's a single crochet into the top of that double crochet, and now let's make a single crochet in the bottom of it. And lastly, before you do this all the way down, let's work into this chain two, right into the middle of it, make a single crochet stitch. You go ahead and do this all the way down. I've just single crocheted evenly all the way down the side. Now we're gonna rotate our work and work along the bottom. We're gonna start by working into the first chain along the bottom, working under both loops, and into this first chain, we're gonna make three single crochet stitches in the same chain. Working into this first chain, under both loops, make three single crochet stitches. And this is going to create our first corner. Now we're going to single crochet in each chain all the way across until there's one chain left. And we're always going to insert our hook under both loops. Working into the next chain, make one single crochet stitch. And make one single crochet stitch in each chain all the way across the bottom until there is one chain left. I've just finished working all the way across. I have one chain left to work into. In this last chain, we're going to make three single crochet stitches into the same chain. Working into this last chain, make three single crochet stitches. And this is going to create our second corner. Now we're going to work up the side we're going to do the same thing up the side that we did when we worked down the side. We're going to single crochet evenly all the way up. When we come across a double crochet stitch, we're going to make a single crochet in the bottom of it and a single crochet in the top of it. When we come across a chain two, we're simply going to make one single crochet into that chain two. We're starting with a double crochet stitch, so we're going to make a single crochet in the bottom of it and a single crochet in the top of it. Now we're at a chain two, so insert your hook somewhere into that chain two and make a single crochet stitch. Now we're at a double crochet stitch again. Working into the bottom of it, make one single crochet stitch in the bottom, and then somewhere near the top of it, make a single crochet stitch. And now we're at a chain two again. Find a spot and make a single crochet into that chain two. And repeat those steps all the way up the side. I've just single crocheted evenly up the side. Now we're gonna work across the top and we're gonna start by working in the top of this very first stitch. Into this stitch, we're going to make three single crochet stitches. In the top of this first stitch, make three single crochet stitches. And this is our third corner. Now we're simply going to make one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across the top until there is one stitch left. I 
I've just single crocheted in each stitch across the top and I have one stitch left. In this last stitch, we're going to make three single crochet stitches. In this last stitch, make three single crochet stitches and this is our fourth and final corner. To finish the round, we're going to slip stitch into the top of the very first single crochet stitch that we made in this round to join, working in the top of this first stitch, slip stitch to join. To start the border round two, we're going to chain one and we're going to turn our work. Border round two is a wrong side round, so the back of our work or the wrong side is now facing us. We are going to skip the stitch that's attached to that chain we just made. This is the slip stitch that joined the previous round and we're never going to work into this joining slip stitch. In the next stitch, we're going to single crochet. Skip the stitch, attach the chain. In the next stitch, single crochet. The next stitch is the corner stitch. It is the middle of three single crochet stitches that we made in the corner in the previous round. Into this corner stitch, we're going to make three single crochet stitches. In this next stitch, make three single crochet stitches, and this is creating our first corner. Now we're going to be completing a set of instructions that we're going to repeat a total of three times. We're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way until the next corner. The corner is the middle of the three single crochet stitches that we made in the previous round. And into this one corner stitch, we're going to make three single crochet stitches. But first, we're going to single crochet in each stitch until that corner stitch. I've just single crocheted in each stitch. Now I'm at the corner stitch into this corner stitch make three single crochet stitches in the same stitch. We've just completed those instructions one time, but we want to complete those instructions a total of three times. I've just completed those instructions and made my fourth and final corner. Now we're going to single crochet in each stitch until back at the first stitch made in the round. So simply single crochet in each remaining stitch. To finish the round, we're going to slip stitch into the top of the first single crochet stitch made in the round. Working into the top of that first single crochet stitch, slip stitch to join. To start border round three, we're going to chain one and we're going to turn. The right side of our work is now facing us. We are going to skip the first stitch, the stitch that's attached to the chain. This is the slip stitch from the previous round that never gets work in, worked into. Working in the next stitch, we're going to single crochet. And this begins the repeat portion of the round where we're going to single crochet in each stitch until the corner stitch. The corner stitch, once again, is the middle of three single crochet stitches made in the previous round. And in this corner stitch, we're going to make three single crochet stitches. These are the instructions we're going to be completing a total of four times. Skipping that stitch attached to the chain, and in the next stitch, single crochet, and single crochet in each stitch until the corner. At the corner stitch, make three single crochet stitches.
you go ahead and single crochet in each stitch until the corner where you'll make three single crochet stitches into the corner stitch and do that all the way around. This will bring you to the fourth and final corner right here. I'm almost finished completing those instructions all the way around. I'm at my fourth and final corner stitch. So in this last corner stitch, make three single crochet stitches. And now I have two stitches left in the round. Into each remaining stitch that you have, single crochet. To finish the round, we're going to slip stitch into the top of this first single crochet stitch that we made in the round to join. Working in the top of this first stitch, slip stitch to join. To start border round four, we're going to chain one. We are not going to turn. Border round four is a right side round, so the front of our work should be facing us. We're going to start by working into the first stitch, the stitch that's attached to the chain. Into this stitch, we're going to half double crochet. Into this first stitch, half double crochet. In the next stitch, we're going to slip stitch. And every time we make a slip stitch in this round, we're going to make it very, very loosely as we're going to work into those slip stitches on the next round. So in this next stitch, we're going to slip stitch very loosely. Working into this next stitch, slip stitch very loosely. Now we're going to repeat those two stitches, half double crochet in the next stitch, slip stitch very loosely in the next stitch. We're going to repeat that all the way until the corner stitch. Once again, the corner stitch is the middle of three single crochet stitches made in the previous round. But up until that corner stitch, we're going to repeat half double crochet, slip stitch, half double crochet, slip stitch, all the way to that corner stitch. We've just made a loose slip stitch. Now we're going to make our half double crochet stitch in the next stitch. And slip stitch very loosely in the next stitch. Half double crochet in the next stitch. Slip stitch very loosely in the next stitch. You go ahead and do this all the way until the corner stitch. I'm almost finished repeating that all the way into the corner stitch. As you approach this corner stitch, the stitch before is either going to be a half double crochet or a slip stitch, depending on how many stitches you have. And that can change for each side of this border. And it doesn't matter, you don't need the correct number of stitches to make the pattern work. However, we are going to do something different if your stitch before the corner is a half double crochet stitch. So right here in my pattern right now, I've done a half double crochet, then a slip stitch. So my next stitch following the pattern is going to be a half double crochet stitch. So I've just made a slip stitch. My next stitch is a half double crochet stitch. If yours is a half double crochet stitch, we're going to now make a slip stitch in the same stitch so that we can maintain the pattern leading up to this corner stitch. So if your stitch before the corner is a half double crochet, make a slip stitch, again very loosely, in the same stitch. Simply make a slip stitch very loosely in the same stitch as that half double crochet stitch. And now we can start the corner. If your stitches are working out that you have a half double crochet 
and then a slip stitch in the next stitch before this corner stitch, then you don't need to do anything different. Adding that slip stitch was just to make the pattern work if your stitch before the corner was a half double crochet stitch. Now you know that if you have a slip stitch in the stitch before the corner, that's great. And if you have a half double crochet stitch, simply make a slip stitch in the same stitch. And now we can start the corner stitch. Into this corner stitch, we're going to do three things. First, we're going to half double crochet into this corner stitch. Now working into the same stitch, we're going to slip stitch very loosely. And now into the same stitch, half double crochet. And that completes the corner. The next step is to make a slip stitch in the next stitch, always very loosely. We are going to be completing these instructions a total of four times. So we've just done that once and we're gonna repeat that instructions a second time, a third time, and a fourth time. We have just slip stitched in the next stitch after the corner. Now we're gonna begin the instructions again in the next stitch half double crochet, in the next stitch, slip stitch. And repeat those steps all the way until the next corner. Once again, as you approach the corner stitch, your stitch before may be a slip stitch, and if it is, great, then just proceed to the corner. Or your stitch before the corner, like in my case here, might be a half double crochet because I've just made a slip stitch. So I'm continuing to follow the pattern exactly. So my next stitch is a half double crochet, but we want to have a slip stitch before this corner stitch. So I'm going to add a slip stitch to the same stitch as my half double crochet. And now I'm ready to start the corner. Once again, in the corner, we make a half double crochet stitch a very loose slip stitch and a half double crochet stitch all in the same corner stitch. And the last part of our repeat is after the corner, make a slip stitch, very loose slip stitch in the next stitch. I've now completed those instructions twice. You're going to complete them a total of four times, which will bring you right here. I'm almost finished completing those instructions all the way around. I've just made my fourth corner and after a corner, what we do is make a slip stitch in the next stitch. To finish the round, we're going to make a half double crochet stitch in the next stitch and a slip stitch in the next stitch. If for any reason you have more stitches than that, you can continue repeating those steps all the way until back to the first half double crochet stitch made in the round. If your stitches work out that your last stitch of the round is a half double crochet stitch, simply make a slip stitch in the same stitch before joining. To finish the round, we're going to slip stitch into the top of this first half double crochet stitch to join. So working into this top of this first half double crochet, we can make a normal slip stitch. Doesn't need to be extra loose. We're not going to work into that joining slip stitch. One note is that you may find that the border's curling a little bit towards the front. It will straighten out a little bit as we work on the fifth and final round of the border. But it the border is designed to have a little bit of a lip if you could say because I think that adds a really nice finishing touch to the final edge of the blanket. To start border round five which is the final round we're going to chain one and turn. 
border round five is a wrong side round, so the back of our work is facing us. We are going to skip the first stitch, the stitch attached to the chain. This is the slip stitch from the previous round, and we're never going to work into that. We are going to start by working into the next stitch. The next stitch is the top of the last slip stitch made in the previous round. Into this stitch, we are going to make our first half double crochet stitch. Not working into this stitch, attach to the chain, into the next stitch, which is the top of the slip stitch, make our half double crochet stitch. From now on, when we make our slip stitches in this round, we can make them normally because we're not going to work into them anymore. This is our last round. In the next stitch, which is the top of a half double crochet stitch from the previous round, we're going to slip stitch. In the next stitch, slip stitch. We are going to repeat half double crochet in the next stitch, slip stitch in the next stitch, until we get to the corner stitch. I'm going to be right at the corner stitch after I do those two stitches, but if for any reason you have more stitches before that corner stitch, keep repeating the following steps. In the next stitch, half double crochet. In the next stitch, slip stitch. In the corner stitch, which is the slip stitch, from the corner in the previous round, remember we did a half double crochet, slip stitch, half double crochet. For this round, the middle slip stitch is our corner stitch. And we're going to work into this slip stitch and do the same thing that we did in the corner in the previous round. Into this slip stitch, which is the corner stitch, half double crochet, slip stitch in the same stitch and half double crochet also in the same stitch. And then in the next stitch, slip stitch. These are the steps that we're going to be completing all the way around the blanket. In the next stitch, half double crochet in the next stitch, slip stitch. Repeat half double crochet and slip stitch until the corner stitch. You should now have the right number to complete those steps of alternating between those two stitches all the way into the corner. You don't need to worry about making an adjustments to the stitch before because you'll now have the right number. And then in the corner, you're going to make a half double crochet, slip stitch, half double crochet, all in the same corner stitch. And then after that corner, in the very next stitch, slip stitch. And you're going to repeat this all the way around the blanket. Technically, you'll be repeating that a total of four times. Here's the one time we've done it. There's two times, three times, four times. And then you'll be finishing those instructions right here on the fourth and final corner. I've just completed those instructions all the way around, total of four times. And I just finished my fourth and final corner. The last step is after that corner is to make a slip stitch in the next stitch. And now we're simply going to repeat in the next stitch, half double crochet, in the next stitch, slip stitch. And we're going to repeat those two steps until we're back at the first half double crochet stitch made in the round. So simply half double crochet in the next stitch, slip stitch in the next stitch, until back at the first stitch made in the round. I have two stitches left to work into in the second last stitch half double crochet, and in the last stitch, slip stitch. And to finish the round, we're going to slip stitch 
in the top of this first half double crochet stitch made in the round. In the top of this first stitch, slip stitch to join. And that completes the blanket. All that's left to do is fasten off. And then with your yarn needle, weave in all your loose ends. And now you have a brand new waffle stitch blanket. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I really hope you enjoy making this blanket. I am here if there's anything at all I can do to help. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you enjoyed this video, I'd be delighted if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you again and have a wonderful day.